Hello everybody and welcome to another Pat Problems video. My name is Helena, I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials at the University of Oxford and today we're going to be taking a look at question 19 from the 2014 Pat paper. So this is one of the long questions on the 2014 Pat paper so it's going to be a little bit longer than some of the other uh, questions to go through. So we're going to split this video into a couple of parts. So this is going to be looking at the first couple of parts of question 19, and then we'll have a second video looking at part C. So let's take a look at the question here. So this is a mechanics question, and we have this setup here. So we're told we have two masses, M1 and M2, connected by a massless non-extensible string, supported by a massless pulley, and attached to a table with a hole in the middle. See the sketch below here. OK, so for the first part of the question, we're being told to assume there is no friction and derive an expression for the acceleration of the masses and for the tension of the string. OK, so crucial bit of information here. The fact that the string is non extensible means that we have the same tension acting um, from the string on both of the masses. So let's draw some forces on our diagram. So first of all, we have the weights of the two masses. So this one has M1G and this one has M2G acting downwards. We also have the tensions of the string. So it's acting upwards on this block here and is acting to the left on this block here. So the tensions are the same on both blocks. Now, how are these blocks going to move? So if we released these blocks from rest, we would expect this block to accelerate downwards. Now, again, because the tensions are the same, we're going to have the same acceleration acting on this block. So the same magnitude of acceleration acting on the block, but just in a different direction. OK. So now let's think about our forces and let's start to resolve some of these forces. So if we look at the forces on block one, our vertical forces are balanced. So we actually have a reaction force acting upwards from the table to balance the weight acting downwards. However, we have a net acceleration in the horizontal direction. So we can resolve horizontally. So remembering that our equation uh, for net force, which is equal to mass times acceleration, we have that the tension on block one is equal to its mass m1 times the acceleration a. So we've resolved those forces in the horizontal there. And if we're to look at block number two, we can choose the downwards direction as the positive direction because that's the direction in which the acceleration uh, is acting. And we resolve these forces so we have the weight m2g minus the tension which gives us the mass times the acceleration of that block so we have two simultaneous equations to solve so let's go about this by substituting equation one into two to eliminate t and solve that for a so if we do that we have the m2g minus m1a is equal to m2a let's gather our acceleration terms on one side so we have m2g is equal to m2a minus m1 uh, plus sorry m1a and factorize this out which gives us m1 plus m2 times a and then divide through to get our expression for a which is m2g divided by the sum of the masses m1 plus m2 here so that is our expression for the acceleration now let's substitute that back into one to get our expression for t, which is equal to m1 times this, which gives us m1 m2g divided by the sum of the masses m1 plus m2. So those are our expressions for the acceleration and the tension um, in this setup. So now let's have a look at what part two is asking us. Okay. So now and for the rest of this question, we're being asked to consider friction acting on the table, but not on the pulley. OK, so we've got friction acting between the block M1 and the table. Now, we're also nicely told the form that this frictional force takes. So we're told that FR is equal to the coefficient of friction, whether it's static, B1, 
because the block is not moving or whether it's dynamic, which means the block is moving. So it's the coefficient of friction times the mass times gravity. OK, and we're told that the coefficients are known, so we just need to keep them in there in the equations. OK, so we're being asked to derive the exact same thing, but just with this new setup considering friction. So we're being asked to derive expressions for the acceleration and the tension in the string. And we're also being asked for a specific condition, but we'll come back to that in a second. So let's return to our diagram rather than drawing it all out again. I'm going to reuse the diagram from part A, but I'm going to add our frictional force, which is going to oppose the direction of motion here, and that is F, F, R. OK, so if we look at our diagram and we're thinking about resolving forces the way we did before, our forces on block two have not changed. So we have the exact same equation as we had before here for our forces on block two. So I'm just going to copy that across here. So two, we still have that M2G minus T is equal to M2A. Now, I'm going to do something here with the, uh, the values of T and A just to make sure uh, I'm making it clear that they're different to what was in part A. So I'm going to add a little dash or a prime symbol here to show that they're different to part A now, but we're still using the same symbols. So that's our expression for the forces acting on block two. Now let's have a look at block one. Now, if we resolve these forces, rather than just having T equaling the mass times acceleration, we've got to do T minus the frictional force, which is the mass times the acceleration here. OK, so let's write this down. So on block one, we now have that T prime minus those frictional forces, F, F, R, is equal to M1, A prime. OK, now we have a case where we've got acceleration, so our blocks are moving. So the form of the frictional force that we want is going to be the one with the dynamic friction coefficient, mu d times it's acting on block one now so it's times m1 times g so let's put this in so we have t prime minus mu d m1 g is equal to m1 a prime great we just have this extra term to contend with in our simultaneous equations now so let's do the maths part so if i sum these two equations i'm going to be able to eliminate our t prime and solve for a prime so let's do that so if i do two plus one I find that M2G minus mu D M1G is equal to M1 plus M2A prime. I'm just gathering those terms together to make it a little bit easier for myself here. Now let's do a little bit of rearranging. And if we divide through by this term, we can also factorize out a G here. So we're dividing through and factoring out G, we get the A prime is equal to m2 minus mu d m1 times g divided by m1 plus m2. And that's our new expression for the acceleration. So we've now got this coefficient of friction, dynamic friction uh, coming in here. Now let's rearrange quest, uh, equation two to make t the subject. So from two, we have that t prime is equal to m2 g minus m2 a prime or factorize that we have m2 into g minus a prime and now we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra um, but we're going to substitute in our expression for a prime into this equation and simplify that down as much as we can so if we do that we find that t prime is equal to m2 g minus all of this uh, m2 minus mu d m1 g divided by m1 plus m2 so i can factor out a g here so we have m2 g into 1 minus m2 minus mu d m1 that should have a one on it divided by m1 plus m2 it's very easy to lose track of our little subscripts here so do your best and now I'm going to tidy this up a little bit more as well. So turn this into one fraction. So if I do that, I multiply the uh, one here by the denominator, which gives m1 plus m2 minus m2 plus two minus signs plus mu d m1 
4 divided by m1 plus m2. Cancel those m2s and we can also factorise out an m1 here. So it's m1 into 1 plus mu d divided by the sum of the masses here. So putting that back in our expression for t prime, a nice simplified version, we have m2 m1 g into 1 plus mu d is over m1 plus m2 and that is our expression for t prime here. So we're also being asked in this question what the condition is, what condition needs to be satisfied for m1 to accelerate, so for that block sat on the table to overcome the friction and accelerate. So let's have a look. So this means uh, we want acceleration a prime to be greater than zero. So let's look at that sort of limiting case where a prime is zero. So if a prime is equal to zero, we don't have any acceleration. So on block two, that means we get rid of this term here, which means that t prime is equal to m to g from that equation there. So let's write this here. So for block two, we have that t prime is equal to m to g. And if we look on block one, we can do something similar at our expression up here. If that's at zero, our t prime is equal to mu s this time because we've got no acceleration, our block isn't moving. So now it's equal to mu s m1 g. Okay, so we have t prime is equal to mu s m1 g. So for the block m1 to accelerate, so for this left side to be greater than zero, we can see that this t prime has got to be greater than this frictional force. We've got to overcome that static friction here. So for a prime is greater than zero, we can see that this t prime here on block m1 has got to be greater. Oh, sorry, yep. Mu s t prime has got to be greater than mu s m1 g, like that. And if we substitute in our expression for t prime given by block two, that means that m2 g must be greater than m, uh, mu s m1 g divide through by g, which means our uh, criteria here is that the mass of the second block, m2, has got to be greater than that static frictional coefficient multiplied by the mass of the first block. And if that holds true, we're going to get an acceleration. So we're going to get the blocks moving as we have thought they were moving in the rest of this question. OK, so those are the first two parts of the question. In the next video, we'll go through the final part of the question where we're being asked to think about something extra in addition to all of this.